first my my dad thought the world and all of my my grandfather and um, there's little stories that I think of that really kind of shape my my life and, and one of them that I have to tell real quickly is about my my dad which was um, you know of course he was European and um, he was down in the field and uh, he got the pickup stuck and, and my grandfather was with him and my dad tells this story of course my dad's passed now but back then he did and so he would you know, just shove the pickup up into reverse, spin backwards, shove it and drive, spin forward, all those things. And finally, he just got out, slammed the door, and he said, well, I'm going up to the house, which is probably maybe a mile away. Yeah. He said, I'm going to go get the tractor, come back to pull it out. Well, when he came back, my grandfather had gotten the pickup unstuck. He had stuck some limbs underneath the tires, and it just rolled out and my dad was like what in the world did you not tell me that you could get this pickup unstuck my grand my grandpa said you never asked and my grandfather was the full blood Choctaw never said very few words but was so wise that I just loved and and cherished him but but going back to to the time when we so we moved back down there and then my dad was working at a uh, for the Clayton law enforcement and he ended up having a wreck that paralyzed him from the chest down and so he was in the hospital. My mother was still struggling with the divorce in Wichita, Kansas, which left kind of Joe, which was 18 at that time. And then I was 14 at that time to kind of live by ourselves. And he ended up committing suicide. And so I don't tell that story. I, you know, it's a it's a very emotional story yeah. to me. But I tell that story because it's what shaped my life. And the reason why I say that, because from that point on, for about six months when I was 14, I lived by myself. And so if it wouldn't have been for my family uh you know and then uh later on I met my wife I was 15 she was 16 we're still married today been married 35 years but she always says that really we've been together uh 40 years because we dated five years before we got uh married but and then when I was a a senior and, and so after living by myself for a period of time without food without I did have running water because it was on a well but it was cold water and all those things and so I feel like I can relate I have a whole lot of empathy for people that goes through because you know a lot of times people think well why did they put themselves in those situations a lot of times you get put in situations that you don't understand why and you don't know why they happen and so that part and then all of the people that helped me I had cousins that let me live with them I had a family by the name of the Holtz that that took me and let me live with them for a period of time my wife's family even though I was not married to her at that time let me move in with them when I was a a junior and thank uh, God that by the time I was a senior and I go back to people helping me. Uh, D. King owned a grocery store. And, I'd, of course, you know, you don't think about those things at the time. He's, he was a Choctaw. Uh, he allowed me to work in his store in the mornings. Yeah. I'd go to school, work after school, and I was able to get my own apartment and live by myself and and do all those things. And then when I was a senior in high school, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. My old pastor from when I was a kid showed up at the parking lot, and he said, uh, I said, what are you doing here, Brother Bob? I hadn't seen you since I was like 10 years old. And he said, I'm here to check on your spiritual life. Your father had called me. My dad was in the hospital in Memphis, Tennessee at the time. And so I remember remember that very clearly and and my point with all of that story though is if you really want to know what drives and makes me tick yeah. it's because of that that those years of I can remember uh, she wasn't my mother-in-law at the time but I remember going up to her is the second time you know you have to realize I grew up in a family Choctaws are very stoic you know, we don't really say a whole lot. I'm probably the, the abnormal part of that. That's the opposite of who <laughs> yes. you are, right? <laughs> and yeah. and um, but, but a part of that is because I felt like I had to grow into yeah. part of that. And, and so, but the second time that I met her and went and picked up Angie, my wife, for uh, a date was she gave me a hug. And I remember just going you know, what is this lady doing to me? I remember almost leaning back because I just didn't feel comfortable Uh because we didn't do those things. But they helped shape my, my in-laws helped shape my life a lot too because they were the loving, caring, loud, 
boisterous, you know, just talk and have a good time and just express their emotions and tell whatever's on their sleeve, they just tell it. Not us. You know, I, I, we just sat back and whatever kind of came your way, you just dealt with it in your own way and moved on. And, and so all of those things, I feel like, help me be the, the leader that I am today, which is I'd like to think that I'm very caring empathetic I can fit in their shoes mm -hmm. you're never better than anybody else uh, part of, people ask me why do I still live in Clayton Oklahoma it's very rural it's very, and it's because I'm Gary there it's it's a uh, yes I can say I'm the chief I'm the 47th chief of the Choctaw Nation you know we have 12,000 all those things but at the end of the day when I go back home I get to be that person that's just a good friend mm -hmm. a good neighbor and so all of those things I think hopefully keep keep me grounded from being humble to um, and, and being that empathy and, and going back. I'm, I know this is probably uh, for me, it means a lot, but there's it, I think about when they ask Jesus. You know.